So far in the C Sharp programming, which we have seen in this video tutorial series, we focused on storing the data of different types. For example, in the beginning, we started working with the identifiers, whether it's a variable or a constant. Later, we moved to arrays to store the bulk of data. And in the previous videos itself, we stored the data in the collections, whether the generic collections or the normal standard collections. But all the data storage which we have done so far was in primary memory. That means when your program will be terminated, you will not be able to access the same data again. So if there is a situation like you want to store the data permanently so that when you will be opening it for the next time, you can see that. For example, I have created an application which may get some exceptions. And when I have submitted that application to the clients, maybe I don't expect a client to tell me the exact exception message if they are getting any. So what I can do, I can start writing all the exception message or the classes or any sort of description in a particular file so that any programmer or any support guy out there can read the message properly to understand like at what time and how much frequency which errors are coming. So anytime in the programming when you want data storage as I said earlier permanently when you want to store a data permanently you can go for the file handling thing. So in this video itself we are going to do the same that is the file IO and streams. So as I already told like whenever we want to store the data permanently we can use the files so it is going to provide you the data storage along with that you can also retrieve the data either in the text format plain text format or in a binary all right so whenever the read write operation will be done to a particular file we will call it a stream as it's written here when a file is open for reading or writing it becomes a stream and we will get a system.io namespace which will give us the number of classes using which you can access your directory, your files, your drives or whatever you want to implement. So let's see how we can start doing the file IOs in our coming practicals. Before getting started with the file handling concept, I have already included the system.io namespace which will provide me some classes regarding the writing, uh, reading the data, creating the file or directory or working with the drives. So let's start working with that. Like here in the form, I have taken a button on clicking which this particular method will be called. So here in system.io namespace for the file operation, I have a couple of classes like one is file and the other one is the file info. All right. The difference is the file is a static class. You cannot instantiate this and you will have to call the method directly. Like here, you can see file.create. Here, I'll pass an at the rate symbol so that I my slashes will not be considered as the escape sequence. And inside e drive, I have a directory called data inside which I want to create a file like sample.txt. All right. So here is my e drive and data directory. Let's run this as soon as I will run this and I'll click here in this particular directory. Just now I got the sample.txt. Let's say I open it manually. I, I will write something like this is sample file. All right. And I saved it later. I will write the data pr programmatically as well, but I'll do it later. And now if I want to copy that particular file from one location to another, or if I want to move, all right, that is copy paste or cut paste. So for copy paste thing, I will have to call the method called copy where I will have to pass the source file and destination file name. So in the source file, I will use the same E drive. Oh, sorry. Okay. E drive, then data and inside data, I have the sample.txt and later it's a destination where you can pass any other data any other location like e drive data temp and inside that again 
if you want to change the name while copying you can do that as well like copy of sample dot txt all right so first of all i'll have to create a folder here called temp all right and then let's execute it now all right and uh, let's come here and see inside temp i have a copy of sample with the same data similarly to do the cut paste thing you can replace this copy method with the move method you can also use this move method to rename a file if you will put the same directory for example i say renamed sample.txt all right so let's execute this click here and here you will see in the data it is renamed sample.txt file and to delete this file i have a method called delete where i'll again have to pass the path of the file which i want to delete make sure that by mistake you are not removing any important file because which the file which you will delete from here will not go to recycle bin so make sure that you are not trying it with some important file of yours all right so let's execute it now and now you will not find that renamed sample.txt file so this is about this static class file right as you saw it right now whenever i'm doing any operation every time i have to pass a location now let's try to do some similar operations using the file info which is nothing but a normal class all right and let's say instance name is file is equal to new file info and here by the time i will create the instance i will have to pass the location of the file let's say again e drive data and here sample.txt all right and now whatever thing i will do with this file i will not have to pass the location every time right like file.create because i have already sent the location in this object so accordingly it will do the things so let's execute it again and as soon as i'll click again i will get a sample.txt file right here all right and very similarly you will get the method for copy which is copy to where you just want to where you just have to pass the destination not the source one similarly you have move to which has again a single parameter of destination file name and delete where you will not have to pass anything all right because location is already being passed it will not ask for any path here so this is how you can start working with some basic operations using file or file info the difference is as the name says file info apart from doing such basic op basic operations of creating removing renaming uh, or copying the file you can also get some information about a file like when that file was created when it's being modified when it's being accessed what is the size of a particular file some informations like that can be taken from this file info now let's see how ca can i start working with the reading or writing operations with a particular file so for doing that let's take a text box here so here i have taken a text box i will say multi line to true so that i can enter some bigger data all right and this click now i will call it save all right so as soon as i'll click on this i will save the data programmatically right so let's see how can i do that so the same system dot io namespace will give me one more class called stream writer all right so first of all i will have to take the data uh, of this file info file is equal to new file info and here i will create a new file now with the name my text dot txt all right and now i will use the stream writer class right here let's say writer is equal to file dot create text what this will do if the file is not created it will create it and will start writing the text as well if you will see the signature of this create text method it is returning you the instance of stream writer so that's what i have taken here all right and now what i'll do is writer dot right line all right and here i can pass the whatever the data i want to write so i will use text box 1 dot text so 
whatever I will write in the text box will be written in the file as well and once I am done with that what I'll do is I will say writer dot close so that the buffers are closed and the data is properly written alright so let's execute this so let's write any text like this is sample text for file handling implementation let's click on save I haven't given any message so let's go here and see my my text file and the same text is here this is a sample text for file handling implementation alright now if I want to read that particular thing let's say I take another button for the read operation so what will I have to do again I will create the instance of file info like earlier now for reading I will use a stream reader class so reader is equal to file dot open text so it will open the file if it doesn't exist it will throw an error so before continuing with that what I can do is I can simply say if file dot exists it will check whether a particular file exists or not if it exists only then I will do these implementations alright so here I may get a multiple line text inside the file so I will keep on reading that unless and until I am done with the reading operation so let's take a string variable first of all now while str is not equal to null I will keep on reading the file and what will come inside the str reader dot read line so this is what it will do it will keep on reading the data line by line from this file and as soon as it will get a null it will terminate the loop alright and here what I'll do is text box one dot text plus equals to str alright and again like earlier I will have to close the buffer of this stream reader so that the streaming is closed properly alright now let's click on this read button and the same string I got here which I wrote earlier in this file so this is how you can do the basic operation of creating a file or and reading a file in the file handling using system.io namespace